Uh, next up, uh, we have uh, um, Alexei Tiskarev. He is here to talk about um, the, um, the International Decade of Indigenous Languages. Uh, we have already had it mentioned um, many times today, so please welcome Alexei for the get the information straight from the source. <laughs> Uh, thank you thank you very much um, uh, for the organizers and um, for, to, for, for inviting me to this uh, important event. Uh, I'm very grateful um, that um, there are a lot of conversations around the globe uh, about indigenous people's languages going on in the preparations before the for the international decade of indigenous languages. Uh, this is a very important process that uh, should be inclusive and uh should um also encourage different stakeholders to to participate actively and contribute to the result resolution of the uh, global indigenous language crisis um let me share my uh presentation Uh, I hope you can you can see this. Can you? Excuse me for this uh, technical uh, technical issue. So you, you, yes, you can you can see it. Um, so once again, my name is Alexei Tsikarev. Uh, I'm a member of the United Nations uh, Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues and also a member of the uh, Global Task Force uh, for the International Decade of Indigenous Languages that was uh, recently established by uh, UNESCO. Um, a Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues is a subsidiary body uh, to the United Nations Economic and Social Council uh, that considers uh, issues concerning indigenous peoples uh, and delivers advice to the United Nations Economic and Social Council. Also, the mandate of the Permanent Forum is to coordinate on indigenous issues within the United Nations system and provide advice to different agencies and programs and funds uh, of the UN family. Uh, the six mandated areas of the Permanent Forum are social economic development, culture, education, environment, health, and human rights. And of course, indigenous languages is a very important part of these deliberations that we have during our sessions and intersessional activities. UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues uh, has been has played a key role in the um, preparations for the International Year of Indigenous Languages and International Decade of Indigenous Languages. In fact, um, the idea to, to proclaim the International Year was born in, a, in an expert group meeting that the Permanent Forum organized in January 2016. And uh, to my understanding, it has been one of the fastest process in the United Nations uh, because between the... Um, uh, proposing of an idea to establish this kind of year uh, and the actual action by the UN General Assembly uh, that was only one year. Uh, so already in uh, December 2016, the General Assembly proclaimed the international year. Uh, this means that there is a global commitment and a global consensus around the fact that there is a, a, a crisis uh, that involves indigenous languages. Um, this consensus has been joined by all member states uh, of, of the United Nations and uh, uh, the, uh, the, all, all, the, the, all the member states decided that uh, the, uh, a serious action is needed to support uh, more than uh, all, all, almost uh, 300 uh, different indigenous endangered different uh, in, endangered indigenous languages that are under threat. Uh, 
2019 was the international year of indigenous languages that was introduced in order to uh, introduce a human rights based approach and encourage states and indigenous peoples to undertake urgent measures for language revitalization and preservation that earlier seemed impossible or untimely. There is also a global consensus around indigenous peoples communities that uh, we should not call indigenous languages dying languages. Uh, indigenous languages are definitely under resourced and need support. And also this support means financial support uh, as was claimed in the study of the UN in, um, expert mechanism on the rights of indigenous peoples on um, languages and cultures. Uh, and in that study, the, the expert mechanism said that um, states should provide as much financial support to revitalize indigenous languages uh, that uh, has been spent to threaten them over the uh, centuries. Um, and um, if we say that the International Year of Indigenous Languages was a very short time uh, to, uh, to do a real action in the field of uh, language revitalization, uh, so it was only enough to actually um, raise awareness about this, this topic among member states, among indigenous peoples themselves, among other stakeholders. So this international year contribute uh, to the situation where uh, no state, no other actor can say that indigenous, that there is no crisis on indigenous languages. Uh, but all stakeholders uh, actually um, decided uh, that so uh, the, the, the one year was not enough and there is a need for much more time and much more action. Uh, and therefore, uh, at the end of the international year, at the General Assembly meeting, there, there was a proclamation uh, of, a, of a decade uh, of indigenous languages. And the decade will start in 2022 and will give us actually not even 10 years, but 11 years, in fact. Uh, and and uh, two more additional years because uh, there was a, a transition period between the be, be, between the year and the decade. Um, as I said, uh, the international year contributed to the um, uh, raising awareness about uh, indigenous languages as a human right and introducing human rights based approach. And the key role in this um, awareness raising uh, plays the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. The UN Declaration is a, is a key international instrument uh, that uh, unites uh, all, all the provisions uh, about uh, the complexity and all the interlinkages between different rights of indigenous peoples. In particular, Article 13 says that indigenous peoples have the right to revitalize, use, develop, and transmit to future generations their histories, languages, oral traditions, philosophies, writing systems, and literatures, and to designate and retain their own names for, commu for communities, places, and persons. And in the same article, um, also, um, there is an encouragement for member states to provide resources for this work. Um, and as I said, there are a lot of interlinkages. So in the process of, uh, of research and deliberations in the United, in the United Nations system, uh, also other, uh, experts say that, um, uh, language rights have a, a serious impact on many, many other rights, including the right to health, uh, the right to uh, self-determination, uh, even uh, rights to lands, uh, natural resources, and so on and so forth. Um, one of the key uh, elements of the um, discussions about indigenous peoples' uh, languages um, has educational system. Uh, there is, um, so in, in all consultation meetings that uh, have been held uh, recently, indigenous peoples um, speak about education systems, including their own education systems and state-run education systems that need to be, uh, that need to uh, adopt uh, indigenous cultural, uh, uh, indigenous cultures uh, and indigenous, uh, on indigenous views on how uh, languages should be taught. Uh, in the region that I represent in the permanent forum uh, in the Eastern Europe, Russian Federation, Central Asia and Transcaucasia, um, we, we have seen recently uh, good movements towards, the, uh, towards providing 
children with more um, culturally, uh, culturally appropriate educational systems that, uh, um, for example, the nomadic schools in the Republic of Sahai Kutia and Yamal and Netsky Autonomous Region, uh, the IT camps in, and, and um, uh, camping um, kindergartens in the Hantimansi Autonomous Region, Ugra, uh, and other good practices that that provide for um, uh, education uh, of language, of indigenous language, language, but also other uh, other subjects uh, that are taught in school uh, in indigenous communities. So the uh, the practice of um, residential schools and boarding schools that um, still um, operate in some regions uh, of, of the world is claimed as uh, non-sufficient and actually damaging uh, the the mental health and um, and um, uh, perception, the ability to perceive uh, indigenous languages and traditional knowledge of indigenous peoples. So these new practices um, that that have been established, they um, uh, need to be uh, transmitted to other regions too. Uh, also, the international year and the international decade uh, have to support grassroots language activism. Um, this is a picture of a Karelian language house. So my, my indigenous community is Karelian community in the Republic of Karelia uh, in the uh, northwest uh, Russia. And um, this is a very good example of uh, a grassroots language activism. So uh, uh, several years ago, uh, community members in the village of Vialyarvi um, decided that they need a physical space to establish programs uh, to revitalize indigenous languages, including language nests. Uh, they needed a space to exercise uh, cultural expressions in indigenous languages, to do crafts, to do uh, theater and other activities jointly uh, by community members. And um, this, uh, this Karelian language ha house has become a symbol of language revitalization in this particular community, but also more largely uh, in the Republic of Karelia. So right now in, in this house, um, um, there is the only language nest uh, in the Republic of Karelia that is fully operational in the Karelian language. And uh, the results uh, already show uh, very good, um, um, I mean, the, this, this language nest shows very good results already. Uh, and and um, there is a hope that um, we could follow in the example of Inari Sami, uh, Maori, and Hawaii uh, um, uh, colleagues uh, to to uh, to uh, increase the number of uh, of native speakers in the Karelian language. Um, also, uh, during the international year and uh, right now, while we're speaking about the decade, we we speak a lot about language development development of writing systems, literatures, and information technologies. Uh, some languages are still, uh, do not still have a writing system. Uh, in recently, uh, for the Eveni, Even language in the Siberia, um, uh, the, <clears throat> there was established an alphabet, uh, and that was that the alphabet was adopted officially, uh, which uh, is a basis for uh, providing uh, textbooks in, in, in these languages, um, in this language. Uh, there are also um, uh, information centers and techno language technology centers that, that operate across regions. Uh, one good example uh, from my region is the Republic of Komi uh, Language Technology Center that, um, uh, that provides uh, educational material, online-based uh, language courses uh, capacity building uh, courses for the teachers and kindergarten teachers, uh, as well as community members and activists uh, on how to best um, revitalize and uh, and teach indigenous um, uh, under-resourced indigenous languages. There are also lots of attempts to support indigenous literature and arts. And um, speaking about this, um, it is also good to mention that 2020. 21 uh, is proclaimed by the United Nations as the International Year for create, on, on Creative uh, Economy uh, for Sustainable Development. And this creative economy uh, include, in, in, includes um, um, 
indigenous arts, crafts, and other activities that activities that are based on their traditional knowledge. Um, and uh, th these are th these are entrepreneurial activities, including um, uh, ethnic tourism uh, and uh, handicrafts, and so on and so forth. That could be also based on indigenous languages and could support um, uh, self-sufficient uh, local economies of indigenous uh, indigenous communities. Uh, here on the picture, there is also um, a very encouraging example from the Karelian uh, Wikipedia uh, that um, didn't exist um, uh, several years ago, but uh, by efforts of, of language activists in, in the uh, in the Republic of Karelia, but also in Finland, um, uh, such a Wikipedia uh, has been established and is is um, uh, is being developed. Uh, I should also underscore the role of indigenous languages in in modern democracy. Um, we um, uh, should encourage encourage uh, states to to support uh, political activities and. Uh, activities that are related to democratic processes uh, that they should also be uh, run in indigenous languages. Uh, one example is um, uh, printing, printing out uh, the voting ballots for the, um, for the, for the uh, elections. So um, most recently in, in my republic, uh, we, we haven't had this uh, opportunity for indigenous uh, webs and Karelian peoples to, uh, to actually uh, vote uh, in indigenous languages, but uh, uh, th thankfully, um, uh, most recent um, legislative uh, actions uh, have supported the idea that the, the ballots uh, could be uh, printed on on the uh, in the Karelian and Vepsian uh, languages, and this, of course, contributes to the um, uh, to the processes of the, of democracy. In indigenous communities, that encourages actually uh, indigenous community members to participate in elections, because uh, by this by this action, uh, government um, uh, revitalizes not only the language itself but also the prestige of this language and the and um, um, the the the, uh, the trust of indigenous community in their own language. Uh, I have to mention also self-governance self institutions and participation in decision-making because this is a very important uh, part of the discussion about languages. Um, if we don't support self-governance, indigenous own organizations, their own institutions, decision-making bodies, traditional and modern, uh, there is no way uh, for the languages to operate in the administration system. Researchers say that uh, indigenous la that languages are only vital if they are represented in the four um, spheres. One is uh, the media, another one is education, the third one is uh, digital space, and the, the, the fourth one, of course, is the administration, which includes justice system, uh, health, uh, healthcare establishments, um, and uh, government bodies. So um, supporting indigenous languages um, to be operational in, in these spheres uh, is, is very important and vital. Uh, UNESCO um, recently uh, adopted uh, and, and published a, a, flagship, a flagship report that um, uh, discusses the uh, implementation of indigenous, of the International Year of Indigenous Languages in, in different regions. And, um, one emphasis in this particular report is on good practices across regions. Um, so one example I wanted to raise here uh, is from the from the region um, uh, I represent, and um, this is a Sana 2019 project. That um, uh, if if you go to this website, you can uh, you can look at the uh, collection of uh, different uh, advanced practices by Finno Ugric. Uh, language communities uh, to preserve and revitalize their indigenous languages, from cinema to music bands to uh, language nests and other uh, interesting uh, community-run projects. Uh, this SANA project uh, was cross-regional, so it was not only um, the Russian Northwest, but it, it, it was also 
uh, inclusive of uh, the Baltic Sea region, including Estonia and Finland. And um, uh, within this project, uh, indigenous communities got support uh, on the basis of contest. So they got even financial support for their um, practice, for their uh, own projects, mini projects that um, contributed to language preservation and revitalization. But also this, this project provided capacity building, uh, which is another important area of the international year and the international uh, decade. Uh, I would also like to mention the uh, evaluation report uh, on 2019 International Year of Indigenous Languages that was uh, recently adopted by the UNESCO General Conference. And this report consists of a lot of good uh, analysis of the um, of how different regions succeeded in, in, in and, and also uh, gl uh, globally, um, how we succeeded in um, conducting activities on the international um, in support of the indigenous languages. And some recommendations are mentioned here, for example, include indigenous representatives with expertise in indigenous language revitalization in the core team coordinating the decade, providing member states with guidance on terminology that encompasses and inclusive interpretation of the term indigenous languages. So um, basically it says that um, uh, we should not forget that the international decade is about indigenous people's languages, right? Uh, but also it could be a little bit more inclusive of, of those languages that are um, currently not recognized as indigenous, uh, which uh, nonetheless uh, should be a basis for the discrimination of those languages while we speak about um, uh, language, uh, language uh, indigenous language revitalization and, and preservation. Unfortunately, uh, across the, the globe, there are many states and many places in the world that still um, uh, are reluctant to um, to uh, develop policies to support the domestic indigenous languages, calling them uh, differently, like mountain people's languages or uh, minority languages or something like this. And um, this should not prevent the global community from helping and included this this uh, indigenous languages in the um, in the program of of this international decade. Another another um, issue that um, arised in in the in the evaluation report is the regional balance that some regions um, had more information. <coughs> excuse me, had more inf information about indigenous uh, about the UNESCO. Uh, programs um, about the international year um, and and some regions did not have such uh, accessibility and and this is mm, this is because of several reasons including the the use of the U UN the six uh, all six UN languages in the um, awareness raising campaign uh, in the UNESCO website that is devoted to indigenous uh, languages as well as the work of the members of the steering committee that um, from particular uh, regions. Uh, another important, uh, another important, important document that I just briefly mentioned here is uh, Los Pinas Declaration, uh, making a decade of action for indigenous languages. That is uh, a main, the main deliverable of the high-level conference um, uh, that concluded the international year and that was held in Mexico City in February uh, last year, just before the pandemic. Uh, the strategic report of the international year that was adopted by General Conference of UNESCO, the, the flagship report <coughs> that I already mentioned, and the survey of the recent research that is uh, yet to be published, but uh, it, 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 has been, uh, it has been developed on the basis of, of uh, scientific uh, submissions that uh, UNESCO received. Um, uh, during the international year. So this report also includes a lot of good analysis based on the most recent uh, research. Uh, well, concerning the international uh, decade, um, uh, currently there are processes uh, that uh, prepare us for uh, rapid actions uh, starting next year. So the global task force uh, has been uh, established and it is uh, a large 
um, a large entity consisting of the, the core steering committee uh, and then the advisory committee uh, and also um, other stakeholders that uh, could also co and region and, and working groups that could also contribute to the to the work of the task force. So the task force is inclusive of all states and indigenous peoples and indigenous peoples actually had a chance to um, uh, to, pro uh, to to nominate their own representatives ac selected according to their own um, practices and their own um, selection processes uh, in in their respective social cultural uh, cultural regions. Uh, another important um, element of preparation is the global action plan that will combine uh, all the um, important activities that will be run by uh, by UNESCO and other. Uh, actors involved in this process, and this action plan is is being currently prepared, uh, based on the uh, online uh, surveys and and uh, regional consultations that were held uh, last uh, months, uh, and this action plan will be um, uh, finalized by the April of next year and will be presented uh, at the twenty first session of the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. Another important um, uh, task for the, for the global task force is mobilization of resources that includes uh, establishment of a multi-donor trust fund. Uh, and one important, one important uh, note here that the, uh, the global, the, the multi-donor trust fund should be governed um by both states and indigenous people so indigenous people should be part of all decision making processes and should be included in the governance of this um uh, and in the in the distribution of these financial resources to be raised uh, an online platform uh is going to be uh established that will also replace the the current uh website of the international year and hopefully this this online platform will be um, run in uh, at least all six UN official languages that will provide accessibility for this information. And supporting research is another important uh, important element. <clears throat> uh, this is the overall structure of the um, prospective international uh, global action plan uh, that consists of several um key elements including strategic approach guiding framework implementation guidelines and of course monitoring and evaluation tools uh and most importantly uh these are some uh some uh, proposals that have been raised by indigenous peoples themselves during consultations in uh in regions um so people uh ex experts and uh, indigenous peoples representatives and state representatives jointly uh, discuss this uh, these ideas and one of the uh, most important ideas is inclusion and empowerment of indigenous uh, language communities uh, of course um, uh, contributing to legislation improvement and legal recognition of indigenous languages so policy making um, language uh, should be recognized as important for peace justice and development um, and um, probably one of the most important this conference is this digitalization and modernization of indigenous languages. So language, innovative language technology uh, should um, um, support the process of teaching uh, indigenous languages and um, um, providing space for the original content uh, in indigenous languages uh, digitally in on the on the internet uh capacity building activities for teachers uh kindergarten uh, teachers language technology specialists should be uh continued to um to provide uh, to be provided um uh, there should be a commitment to bilingual programs and sustainable and establishing of sustainable language environment that is inclusive of health education um, employment gender equality technology and many, many other uh, important spheres. And, um, and lastly, uh, I would like to 
uh, to say that um, indigenous languages got a very uh, serious attention during the last 20th session of the UN Permanent Forum <coughs> on indigenous uh, issues uh, in April 2020. Uh, 21. Um, there was a, a thematic discussion on this topic, and uh, uh, the report of the 20th session is already um, adopted by the Economic and Social Council, and uh, the draft report is available um, on the website of the Permanent Forum in all official uh, UN languages. <coughs> uh, one of the ideas of this um, one of the proposals of this thematic uh, discussion was to uh, was that the full and effective participation of indigenous peoples at all levels um, and also government ministries and the private sector should be um, ensured. So we we, we say um, that the the process of revitalization and support for indigenous languages is a, a real multi-stakeholder process that. Uh, the responsibility, the main responsibility, of course, is on indigenous peoples themselves, but but others, um, the role of other parties, uh, most critically states, uh, are also is also uh, crucial. Uh, and the the private sector has a lot of uh, possible um, uh, contribution opportunities, uh, not only financial but also um, including indigenous languages in their um activities in indigenous territories um having said this uh i would like to uh to, to thank you very much once again for for your attention and um to express the the full support of the permanent forum uh for your uh, important conference and um the openness of the forum members to cooperate with with all uh with all stakeholders uh, on this matter. Thank you so much, uh, Alexei, for coming here and helping us lift uh, the efforts we do to a higher level. This, uh, it's really nice to feel that we are part of a bigger movement um, now. Um, thank you very much. We, I have asked for questions, but so far there hasn't come any in the chat. So we leave it for this. 